Welcome back, everyone. We've been talking about how businesses are using IT, and I have mostly given an example of how small businesses use IT because even the smallest business nowadays uses information technology quite a lot, quite often, um, at least in terms of cash registers and things like that. And a lot of small businesses also um, improve their business by using the internet and resources on the internet, like social media, to market or help people be aware of what they're doing. Okay, so now I want to talk a little bit about um, bigger businesses. So in a bigger business, most people um, um, think back about uh, what businesses actually provide. So bigger businesses might have a product, but they also probably have some sort of service, right? So. Um, can I say it's somewhat rare to just have a business that only produces products. A lot of businesses um, in a lot of countries are services, actually service-oriented businesses. Okay, So um, these companies use IT in a lot of different ways. I'm just going to generalize this. So imagine a, a normal um, business. Any business office you go to, just like a small business, is probably going to have a computer where their computer is a personal computer that they use to do a lot of different things. Um, not uh, the similar, this is similar to a cash register in a very small business, right? So a very large business, if they don't have a product that they're selling, they probably don't have a cash register, right? But they probably have computers for each employee or almost every employee, okay? Then they also most likely have the internet, right? So internet is really indispensable for, for major businesses these days. Um, at least one or several departments in the organization need access to the internet. Maybe not all of them, but some, most of them. So a computer for each employee, probably. Internet available to almost everyone. Um, and then on the back end, so these are actually kind of, um, can I say client side? services, right? So we provide a computer to the employee. Um, if the company's nice, they provide the, co the computer to the employee. They provide the internet to the employee. These are services for the client or the person who's doing the work, okay? But on the back end, what we call the back end, there's actually a lot going on. Okay, so if a company, especially a large company, is providing computers to each employee, they probably have some sort of authentication server, right? So authentication server that keeps track of all of the computers, who's logging in, who is allowed to log in, um, and what can they do? So the authentication server, whenever somebody is on their computer, they want to log in, they check with the authentication server if they can log in, then they can get access to the computer. If they can't, they get logged out. Most businesses offer some sort of authentication uh, mechanism to get onto their IT systems. This is good for a lot of different reasons because um, imagine that I'm working with a customer list. So imagine this is a list of all of my customers. I don't want just anyone to be able to walk into my office and get on my computer, right? So if there's a customer list located on this computer, we want to restrict access to who can, uh, who's allowed to have access to that customer list, right? So then you need the actual login password um, uh, username uh, to get access to the customer list. So for example, okay, so the back end we have authentication server, but for these to talk to each other, we also need a local network. Right, So some sort of networking infrastructure so that way the computers and servers can actually talk to each other. This is kind of like um, in your home, you probably have an access point that connects into the wall and then you get internet from that access point. That is a piece of networking equipment that gives you, uh, basically puts your phone or your computer on the same network as um, uh, other devices. So you can connect your laptop, you can connect your phone, all in the same network, and then all of those devices can connect to the internet. So 
Companies also have that kind of infrastructure, except a lot more advanced. Okay, um, I might show you some technology in a second. I would grab it. Um, so they have the authentication server. They need a way to talk to each other. So they have a local network, and then they probably have some sort of storage on the network. So I'll say network uh, network accessible storage, right? So um, and these are all also services that are provided by the company. So the company gives everyone a computer. Um, we have a local network. We have authentication server. We have some sort of storage, and then actually uh, connection to ISP, the internet service provider that provides the internet. Okay. Now this is more uh, of a common type of scenario that you would find in a major business or even a even a medium, uh, fairly large size business. This is what you would normally find. With a very large business, you'll find the same thing except split up into smaller units that are actually manageable. Once networks get too big or there's too many devices on a network, it becomes harder to manage them. So then you have to, usually we split them up into smaller groups and then connect all the groups together um, in different ways, depending on what they need. Okay, so this is what we would call the infrastructure. And the infrastructure is actually um, uh, the devices that are on the network that support whatever the business is trying to do. So how does the computer support what the business is trying to do? People can send emails, business emails. People can make um, uh, Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, things like that from their computer. Okay, well, how does the authentication server support the business? Well, if this person, for example, whoever's on computer A, if they move to computer B, the authentication server can say, yeah, you can have access to both of them because you're okay on the network. Or maybe we want to restrict them to only one computer. Um, likewise, with an authentication server, network storage, and a local network, this person can log into computer A and get all of their files. If they move to computer B, they can also get all of their files, right? So no matter where they move to, they have access to company documents that they need, um, while at the same time restricting everyone else so no one else can get access to confidential documents, okay? Um, so there's lots of different reasons, uh, I, I guess, why um, uh, this supports whatever the business is trying to do. So. Um, local network help communication, help two people actually work with each other, for example. Over the network, we can send data instead of having to walk to somebody's office and hand them a document. Okay, uh, storage, um, lots of reasons we would use storage. And then ISP, because all of the services that we're going to access that are outside of our, our company are going to be online or uh, on the internet or we're going to try to communicate with other organizations, for example, stock management companies, to be able to order more stock, okay? So this is about the infrastructure. Um, and uh, next I'll talk about, um, or maybe I can cover it really quickly. Um, other than infrastructure, once we have infrastructure in place, then we have people that can use technology, right? We can use technology to do whatever it is that the business is trying to do. But we can also use um, information technology to change the way we interact with our customers. So, for example, the internet gives us a reach um, or uh, it gives us access to a lot of people. That's one of the great things about the internet is we can access billions of people pretty much immediately. Okay? So, this up and opens up new types of business opportunities. For example, uh, before, if I opened a shop in Chunchan, right? So I have a dress shop in Chunchan. Um, the only people that, that can come to my shop are the people in Chunchan, right? And I don't know, I'll give them a hat. Are the people in Chunchan and maybe people who are visiting Chunchan, right? So it's going to actually be very difficult for my shop in Chunchan to be very well known. 
unless I'm doing something really interesting or I have a really good product and then a lot of people come and see it, it's going to be hard for me to be found. Okay. So then my customers are going to be maybe, you know, uh, a thousand people possible of which maybe 5% actually come and buy something in my shop. Okay. Um, so I, I have a limited number of customers that are likely to come to my shop. Okay. With the internet, that completely changes. So imagine I have this, this dress shop or whatever it is, and I put it on the internet. Okay. How many, how many people might come to my website or might buy one of my dresses as long as I put it on the internet? Well, anyone. Now, all of Korea can potentially, um, can potentially act. This is Korea, by the way. So, <laughs> okay. So this is Korea. I'm in Chuncheon, but now everyone in Korea can actually access my shop through the, through the internet. So then now my customer base rose from 1000 to, you know, 40 million. Okay. Now, um, is it only Korea? No. Now, because I'm already on the internet, I already have a website. If I make my website in Chinese, now I can access all of China. I'm just imagine this is China. I can access all of China and they can connect to the internet and come to my shop. So now I have all Chinese people who may be able to purchase something from my shop. If I make it in English, German, French, then now I can get Germany. I can get the, a lot of French speaking countries, Spain, uh, Spanish. Um, Spanish is, I think, the number one spoken language in the world, number two, something like that. Lots of speak, people speak Spanish. So the more um, languages my website supports, the more people can potentially come to my site and buy something. Whereas before, I was limited to a physical location and they had to actually walk into my shop to buy something. So the internet helps us to have a massive, massive reach. Now, imagine that in my shop, I was selling a dress, okay? So I'm selling this dress, really bad, weird looking dress, okay? I'm selling this dress and this dress is 200,000 won, okay? Which is pretty expensive for a dress, right? Um, whenever people come in, I might, um, maybe, maybe uh, in, a, in a month, two people buy the dress. Okay, so I made 400,000 won off of this dress in one month. Okay, um, that might cover my costs. It might not cover my costs, depending on how, how expensive rent is. But um, if I'm online, first off, I have access to a lot more people. So if two people out of 1,000 actually buy my dress, then that means that more people online are more likely to buy my dress. The other thing it does is um, now, uh, how, do I, how do I say this? We can either sell one thing in a re that, that's really expensive to make money, or we can sell a lot of small things and make a little bit of money, right? So there's two kind of basically two business models, either one thing that's really expensive or a bunch of small things that are um, very cheap but I can sell a lot of them, right? We'll talk more about this kind of business model later. Um, basically with these kinds of shops, because it takes space, because it takes work, I put the price of the dress up. So I have one thing that's really expensive um, and I don't get a lot of people into my shop. So I have to basically say, okay, um, people are only gonna buy something that's really nice, really good quality. So I have to make it really expensive, okay? Well, on the internet, you have access to a lot more people. So imagine that one million people um, want to buy something that you produce. And on whatever it is that you make, you make a sticker or something like that, um, uh, you charge uh, ton one. So 1,000 won, and you can sell one million of them. And it costs you 500 won to produce it. Well, you just made, if you can sell it, you made 500 uh, million won, right? 
Because you were able to sell so many of these very, very tiny things, you still made a lot of money, right? And this kind of business model is really easy to do on the internet, but it's really hard to do in real life. Well, not real life, like in a real space, right? In Chunchan, first off, not a lot of people come, uh, maybe for tourism a little bit, but you have to be positioned in a really, really good place where a lot of people will walk by if you want to sell a lot of things, okay? Um, but not every shop can be in the best places. So if they're a little bit hidden, they can never do this kind of business model because they don't get enough traffic. But on the internet, if you have a million people come to your website and they're all willing to buy something that's very cheap, then you still make a lot of money um, even after your costs because of um, just so many people bought something. Okay, So I'll talk actually more about this business model um, probably in the, the next week. But um, think about the internet um, and... How can I say this? Companies all companies, all companies that are really trying to change their business, get access to more customers um, and uh, make a lot more money are trying to use the internet to basically get a, a, an audience, a lot of people that are willing to spend relatively small amounts of money, sometimes a lot of money, but re mostly relatively small amounts of money um, and uh, in mass. So if you can have this kind of business model, then people will continue to pay small amounts of money because they're more likely to pay a little bit than a lot. Um, then you can make a lot of money over time because you have access to more people, okay? Um, versus making one really, really quality product, but very few people are going to buy it because it's too expensive, right? So think about your business model. Sometimes making a quality product and selling it in an expensive way is a good business model because maybe a lot of people are making a cheap product and selling a lot of them, right? So if this space is already taken, the quality product might be the better business model. But the internet makes it much easier to choose which one do you want to do, because before it was really hard to get access to this many people. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about how um, uh, companies are using IT, not only in terms of infrastructure in their own organization, but also the way that they're using IT and the internet specifically to get access to different customers. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much.